Hey, how you all doing? It's me, Crazy Frankie, and I'd like to welcome you to my Week 12 Four Key Game Picks. Before we talk about Week Number 12, as you can see right now, the background, I'm not in my usual setting. I'm currently on vacation right now. Um, I took my laptop, so I'm able to get this video done. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible because um, I don't want to. I don't want to be spending a little bit of time just trying to edit this video and everything. But quick thoughts from Week Number 11. It was quite of an interesting week, obviously. Obviously, the big game that came out of week number 11 was definitely the Eagles and the Chiefs. Definitely a game, a Super Bowl rematch that actually lived up to the hype, even though it was a regular season meeting. Man, Kansas City with so many drop passes. It was a game that clearly they should have won. There was no question about it. But obviously, you got to give the Eagles some credit. Their defense was able to hold the Chiefs to no points in the second half of that game. And that definitely was the big factor in that game. As the uh, Eagles currently right now technically are considered by default, by de facto right now. They're considered the best team that came out of week number um, 11. And possibly the best team out of the NFL currently right now. Because they hold the best record in the league right now with at 9-1. But when you look at other other things that would happen in week number 11, you got to give credit where credit is due to the Detroit Lions. They had to come from behind, even though it looked like there was a game. It wasn't their it wasn't their day. Justin Fields really did a number on that Lions secondary, which is should be a concern if, if you're a Lions fan. Obviously, the running issue or any sort of mobile quarterback could end up hurting this team down the road. If it was to say like they were play against the Eagles, let alone maybe the 49ers. But Detroit eight and two, they haven't been that way in a long time. You gotta give them Dan Campbell has done a fantastic job with this football team. And who knows what down the road is gonna be for the Lions right now. Hopefully they continue this great success because they haven't had any success in the la in the last twenty years. So it's good to see the Lions get back on track. How about the Bills finally getting back on track, even though it was against the Jets, and it, but a Bills game that really they had to have, in a game they had to have just to keep pace in that jumbled mess that is the AFC Conference playoff hunt right now. Devastating news for the Cincinnati Bengals losing Joe Burrow in that Thursday night game. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of question marks now for Joe Burrow and, and the organization whether they're going to be penalized or fined or whatever that might be because of the fact that the risk was disclosed. And the, I mean, normally they don't really, I mean, a lot of people say Cincinnati doesn't really have to disclose and all that, but obviously in, in like betting situations or anything else for that matter, it is a big deal. Be, even though the organization didn't have, I mean, they, they could have done, they didn't handle this very well. And that is just huge question marks for the Cincinnati Bengals going forward, especially the fact that now that Jake Bowling now has to be at the helms for the Bengals. Now, what I found out after, as at the time of this video for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they fire their offensive coordinator and that kind of, a lot of people were calling for um, Mac uh, Canada's head. I mean, Bank, uh, Steelers fans, you got, finally got what you wanted, but whoever takes over as offensive coordinator, look, the the Steelers offense really needs to really get something going here if they want even a chance to stay competitive. Even though the records even though their current record is six and four, it doesn't look like they should be six and four. A lot of things I could have gone over. 49ers continue to dominance. I don't want to talk about the Chargers blowing it to the Packers. A lot of you I I've already gotten enough flack from my friends and my and my brother who basically insult and basically giving me insults on the Chargers. So please I I don't want to get into any more of what happened from last week. Let's talk about week number twelve. It is a it is a thanks it is this is a Thanksgiving edition of week number twelve. But I only have one game from the Thanksgiving from the three three Thanksgiving games I will talk about. And let's and let's talk about week number twelve, shall we? Let's begin with key game number one. It is the 49ers versus the Seahawks. Obviously, big game in the NFC West. Obviously, the Seahawks are one game behind the 49ers. The Seahawks have been the only team that has kept up with the 49ers in terms of trying to fight for the division. Brock Purdy was 21 of 25, 333 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. Geno Smith and a heartbreaking loss to the to the Rams. They got swept by the Rams. He went 22 of 34, 233 yards, one touchdown, and no interceptions. The 49ers are six and a half point favorite in this one here. 
And I would say that's about right, given the fact that the Seahawks kind of hit a bumpy road in the way their offense really struggled against the Rams and losing on a last second field goal. You got to wonder with this football team and that Seattle offense is can they keep up with the 49ers as the as the way it's looking right now the 49ers are now finally looking healthy and are getting back on track and it could not have come at a worse time for the seahawks to try to keep pace in in the nfc west division i given the fact that you know the game look san san Fran has, has in the last 10 years they've been they've been averaging about 500 or i think they're slightly over 500 Seattle's not an easy place to play, given the fact that the, the crowd noise is incredible there. But when I look at this football team, the Seahawks here, there's, I feel like they're starting to lose some of their groove a little bit here. They started out well in the beginning of the season, and then they started faltering. This brings about a big question right now for this football team, is can they keep up with the 49ers, given that their defense is starting to get healthy? I look at this football game and I'm going to pick the 49ers here. I don't. I think the Seahawks are hitting a slump at the worst possible time. Now, currently they still have a. They're still in line for a playoff spot at the moment, but the Seahawks can't afford any more losses here down the stretch because they could put them out of playoff positioning, and who knows what will happen the rest of the way. So, in all honesty, here I like the 49ers in this one here. I'm going to pick the 49ers at six and a half here. I think they get the job done, and especially in a crucial game for the Seahawks and the NFC West. But I just think the 49ers offense will be, and their defense might be too, maybe a little bit too much for the Seahawks in this winner. It should be a good game, but I think the 49ers will pull away in the fourth quarter of this one here. I like the 49ers in this one here, the 49ers of the Seahawks. All right, key game number two. Now we're getting into the Sunday games. And it's a big, and I didn't think this would be a big game now, but it is. Going into the AFC South, and that is the Jaguars versus the Texans. And the only reason why this has been a game that now is worth mentioning here, when really the Jaguars should be running away with this division. Trevor Lawrence in, his, in the last game against the Titans was 24-32, 262 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. Now, going into the Texans and C.J. Stroud, 27-37, 336 yards, two touchdowns, but he was also picked off three times in that football game against the Cardinals. Give the Texans their due a little bit here. C.J. Stroud has kept that team competitive up until this point, when really it should be a rebuilding year for this Texan, for this team. But when you're going up against uh, the Jaguars and all, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna make this short here. I think the Jaguars have the better offense here. Defense-wise, I would say they're kind of hitting a little slump here. But they were playing the Titans, so the defense didn't have to do all that much in in that game against the Titans. The Titans are a terrible team. They're a terrible team, and it, it basically the Jaguars had enough. Had more than enough to beat them. Houston is going to get their first-hand experience of a first-place team in their division. And C.J. Stroud is going to have to really make some big plays to really, to really fool that defense of the Jaguars. But when I look at this football game, I think the Jaguars are a slightly better team in this one here. I'm going to, go pick, I'm going to pick the Jaguars at minus one and a half. I forgot to mention the odds on this one here. It, they're a slight favorite against Houston. But I just think, to me, the Jaguars are a slightly better team. They have the better offense than the Texans do. But it should be a very close game. I could see this game being very close here. But I think the Jaguars will pull away in the fourth quarter. I think this will be a victory for the Jaguars. I'm going to pick the Jaguars at minus one and a half. Jaguars over the Texans. Key game number three. This, should, this is kind of an interesting one here going into the AFC North. I'm talking about the Steelers again versus the Bengals. And the reason why I kind of feel this is going to be an interesting game of a lot of factors going into this one here. Let's see what the Steelers' new coordinator, whoever that might be, can see if they can make something of this Pittsburgh offense with Kenny Pickett do, with the struggles they've had. Now, as I mentioned before, Jake Bowing is now at the helms for the Bengals now that Joe Burrow is out for the remainder of the season. Uh, Kenny Pickett for the Steelers was 15 of 28, 106 yards, no touchdowns, no interception, and a heartbreaking loss to the Browns last week. And for Jake Bowing and the Bengals, see, they had to come in. He was only 8 of 14, 68 yards, one touchdown, Pat, one touchdown, and no interceptions. 
I think it boils down to which team doesn't turn the ball over and makes plays. That's going to be key for this one here because, frankly, it's hard to say for these two teams. I consider this might be a low-scoring game, and a lot of it's going to depend who makes the plays here. I just... I don't know if Jake Bowling can help lead this Bengal team the rest of the way, even though he does have Jamar Chase still. And obviously, the Bengals are missing some key players they've had they've had for a while due to injury. So it's really tough to say if where this bank where the Cincinnati Bengals stand at this point. They're barely at 500, and you've got a backup quarterback that's going to have to finish up the rest of the season. I don't know if this Bengal team is going to be able to. Con uh, to stay in contention given their brutal schedule that they have the rest of the way. Now, the Steelers right now, it's tough to say if their offense can really get it going. It's going to, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game because I don't know what we're going to get out of both of these teams here, but it's crucial for the Bengals to try to stay in any sort of contention in the play, for a playoff berth in the AFC even though they got a brutal schedule. For the Steelers, is to try to keep pace as well as they're trying to link towards a playoff spot as well. So this game is big for both these two teams. But... For the Steelers, they're barely a one-point favorite in this one here. And I just think that Pittsburgh will barely, barely beat the Bengals here. It's hard to say what's going to come out of this football game. But I'm going to pick the Steelers because I think with the new coordinator and if he gets any confidence and gives any sort of confidence to Kenny Pickett and get that offense going, I will pick the Steelers here. It's a tough pick. It's a 50-50 pick. This pick... This game might go to you pick them status before the game starts on Sunday. So it's tough to say, but I'll give but for this one here, I'll go with Pittsburgh at minus one in this one here. I think the Steelers beat the Bengals in this one here. It's Pitts, it's the Steelers over the Bengals. And finally, key game number four. It is the Buffalo Bills versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are a three and a half point favored, and I would say that's about right. Given the fact that the Bills, even though they dominated the Jets. They're going to have their hands full against this Philly offense and the defense that played extremely well against Kansas City. And look at the stats for Josh Allen. 20 of 32, 275 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Jalen Hurts was 14 of 22, 150 yards, no touchdowns, one touchdown, and one interception. This is do or, this is put up or shut up time now for the Bills if they want to have any sort of chance at an upset against the Eagles here. And it's going to be hard given the fact that the Bills' defense has been ha has had a very tough time stopping the run. I mean, the Jets' running game was a didn't even though despite the fact that the Jets' offense stinks, given the fact that they were able to run, I don't know how they were able to run the ball effectively, even though the Jets still ended still lost big in that game. You get, it's going to be in terms of can this Bills team get it together and find any sort of rhythm and and anything that would beat that Philly defense because the Eagles defense is no joke. And it's tough to say whether the Bills defense can even stop the brotherly shove or the tush push, whatever you want to call it, that the Eagles have. I'm picking the Eagles in this one here. I just think their offense is way... Look, their offense is way better than the Bills, and they have the better defense. And it's going to be it's going to be a tough game for the Bills, given that the Bills are barely over 500, and they're still clinging to a... trying to cling to a playoff spot, and, they got, and they're another team that's got a brutal schedule ahead. So I'm going to pick the Eagles in this one here. I think the Eagles are the better team in this one here. I'm going to pick the Eagles over the Bills. All right, everybody, that's it for my four key game picks. Please check the description below for all of my for all of my week 12 picks. And I'll talk to you guys next week when I'll be back home in my proper setting. As of right now, I'm traveling. For, I'm on vacation right now for Thanksgiving. And I want to wish all of you out there a happy Thanksgiving. Where are you going to be? If you're going to be alone or with your families and all, please, please try to enjoy the holiday as much as you can. And I'll talk to you guys next week when I talk when I make my picks for week number 13 and back home. Take care everybody. Enjoy your Thanksgiving and enjoy your NFL weekend.